Welcome everyone to this uh, Privacy Rules Privacy Espresso. My name is Alessandro Di Mattia, Legal and Executive Officer at Privacy Rules. And today I'm pleased to be joined by uh, Susanna Lee, uh, that is Senior Advisor at the Data Tilsinet, that is the uh, Norwegian Data Protection Authority. And we are going to discuss about a very peculiar topic that is the one of uh, um, making a DPA, a perform a DPA, to decide whether or not to be on Facebook in particular particular for uh, the authority itself. So, uh, Susan, can you, uh, can you give us a, a brief overview and a background on why you were thinking about this and, uh, and, uh, and how uh, it, uh, it went? Yes, uh, thank you, Alessandro, for the invitation. I'm happy to be here today. The Norwegian DPA has been on Twitter as a social media for quite a while, and we had a thought that we might be on Facebook as well. We see that many people use Facebook. It's a good way to reach more people uh, than just through our websites and through Twitter. But uh, we saw it necessary to do a, quite a thorough assessment uh, on whether or not to be on Facebook. Uh, we all know that Facebook collects a lot of data and it's not always clear to everyone how they use that data. So we performed the DPIA. Uh, it was quite a lengthy process to uh, do this thorough assessment and it has resulted in a report on about 40 pages. So it's in Norwegian, but uh, I'm sure it could be translated if that's uh, of interest. So uh, as far as we know, we are the first public office, but also the first company probably to perform a DPIA about Facebook. So that's quite interesting to us to be uh, the first to actually do that activity. And we put down a team consisting of lawyers, technologists, and also a social media expert to, uh, to make the assessment. Um, and the background is uh, also the older um, judicial decisions from the European Court of uh, Human Rights, uh, the Wirtschafts Academy and Fashion ID cases, which has um, uh, touched the topic of Facebook and whether or not uh, companies will have a joint controllership with Facebook if uh, one is to use Facebook. So. We are quite aware that there are many things to consider before uh, actually being on Facebook. And uh, to state the conclusion first, our uh, assessment was that the risk was too high for us to be on Facebook. Um, as a DPA, it's extra important for us to make a thorough assessment and be on the safe side. And we also saw this an, as an opportunity to state an example because if a DPA is on Facebook, it could be considered by many as a sort of approval of Facebook as a channel of communication with users and people in, uh, in our country. So uh, that was the conclusion and we're not on Facebook today. And as a consequence of this, also different public offices here in Norway have decided to shut down their Facebook pages after we launched our uh, assessment. So that's also uh, interesting to see that our work actually has an direct impact on how other companies have their personal data. Of course, I'm sorry to, to, to interrupt you, but I think it's very uh, relevant to stress this point, you know, that the role of an authority as a driving force also for other companies and organizations within a specific country, but also uh, for other countries, you know, following the same um, uh, regulation in this case, for example, GDPR to, to know, you know, what's your approach, what, what, what are, which are your thoughts uh, on, on that and your conclusions. And speaking more uh, in detail about the, uh, the assessment, so what did you check and why uh, your conclusion was of uh, too high risk, which were the most complex issues that uh, you were finding? Yes, we used uh, all public available information, their privacy, terms of use, etc., and uh, went through them in detail. And we've also <clears throat> looked at, uh, well, other like the judicial, judicial decisions, etc. So this was the background. And um, Facebook has a standard contract. It's not possible to make a different sort of contract if you decide to use it. So that was the terms of use that we uh, looked at. And from what we could see, uh, their uh, purposes, are their own purposes for which they may use data are very vaguely defined. So it's not possible to get a full overview as of how personal data collected might be used. And of course, it's not only data about us as a joint controller or as a public office, but also, of course, the users. And you cannot control what the users decide to post on Facebook. So that is a risk we have to assess as well, because it's our responsibility as a joint controller. And from what we could see on the terms of use, uh, like I said, it's not possible to get the full overview of how data is processed. 
And from what we could see, it was also several processing activities that weren't included in the terms of use or in the data processing contract uh, per se. So it was lacking in the content, the, the standard agreement. Um, and like I said, it's uh, very vague and impossible to get uh, a good overview. And um, of course it's seemingly free, but as everyone knows, personal data is a currency these days. So that's obviously uh, Facebook's uh, own interest in uh, having both companies and uh, individuals on their site. Um, we also uh, looked specifically at the data protection by design and default, and uh, this could not be attained uh, through that standard contract. And that was uh, something we looked at specifically. And also uh, in a more general sense, uh, the type of data Facebook collects and uh, shares with third parties and others is very um, possible to be used for profiling and uh, such um, um, yeah it's not predictable for the people using the site it's not transparent how it's used and through this profiling you can also be manipulated through the advertising there's also a risk of discrimination based on <clears throat> based on the pattern of how you use so social media and to us these are more than just theoretical risks these are actual risks uh, with uh, what we know from how Facebook uh, uses data to target marketing, profiling their users, etc. And uh, another thing that was important to us is that it's not possible for the DPA to help users uh, execute their rights as to uh, to see their data, to know what is collected on the, about them, etc. So from our a point of view the joint controllership and the responsibility you take by being a joint controller it would not be possible for us to uh, be compliant with the gdpr on several points perfect thanks a lot for this overview that is extremely interesting and i just have a, a last question for you that is based on your experience uh, with facebook that is uh, very interesting and uh, and probably very useful for anyone listening to us today uh, which are your key takeaways in approaching these kind of of companies you know what what to look at what what really it's, uh, it's important and and relevant not only for facebook but in general when we speak about social media because i think that this kind of process and this kind of situation is something that we will see more and more uh, with any social media or many other social media. Yeah, what we see is that uh, a big problem actually might be the standard contracts that are not adjustable, um, they're not transparent, the own purposes of the company are often very vaguely uh, stated. So it does not give a good uh, insight in as to how they will process the data that is collected. And like I said, it's also not only data about us as a DPA or a, of a company that might be using uh, the platform, but also about the users, which you cannot control their actions and how they choose to share their data. So yeah, it's it's not transparent. I guess that's the that's the main takeout. And uh, like I said, the standard contracts uh, seem to be a problem. We have uh, seen this on other areas, mostly with the large American companies like Facebook, Microsoft, etc. So and, and as a as a DPA, where do you see because that's something that happens quite quite often, where do you see a solution to, to these? I would hope that uh, the bigger American companies uh, see that uh, to be compliant with the GDPR and to have actually have the European uh, users, they have to adjust uh, their standard contracts and they have to uh, make sure that they um, are more clear as to what are their own purposes and how can um, how can uh, the users be sure that the company does not actually use data uh, that is not according to what's one uh, what's in the contract? Because that's a that's a very possible risk at this point. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so thanks a lot for for this overview on on this very interesting case, uh, and uh, thanks a lot for sharing with us your experience. We are running out of our time, so I'd like to thank you, uh, Susanna, from uh, the um, Norwegian Authority, the Data Tilsinet, for joining us today and sharing with uh, us today your experience and our listeners for uh, being with us in this Privacy Express. So looking forward to meet them next week with the next one. So thanks a lot to you all and see you all very, very soon again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.